Hi folks, welcome back to another one of our videos. And in today's video, I wanna take you around a hi-fi system which we've just installed into this short wheelbase Land Rover 90 commercial. And so we put something here that we call a Defender System 2 Plus. Now the plus part of the system means that this car has had a DSP added, which is a digital sound processor. So the basic configuration for the audio system is Audison Voce components up front. So that's the six and a half inch woofer down the bottom there. And it's the tweeter in the factory grill a little bit higher up in the door. We've fully soundproofed the door, so I know you'll probably get bored of hearing about this, but it's really, really important. So it's a free layer soundproofing system. So we've got all in here, all in here, all inside here. Everything's been deadened. Then we've deadened the regulator panel. And after we've deadened the regulator panel, with that removed, we've completely deadened the back of the outer skin. So this is now really, really dead as opposed to being really tinny. Now, the reason for that is to create the best acoustic environment we possibly can for the mid-bass driver. So the soundproofing uh, basically eliminates cancellation or helps eliminate cancellation and resonance. So um, makes a really big difference. It's very, very important. We've created a real solid baffle at the bottom there to mount the driver to. And the tweeter, as I say, has gone in stock location. It would probably be slightly nicer if we exposed that tweeter, but the problem is it will really deter from the sort of factory look because it's quite, quite a specific look, as you can see. Um, now, because this is a commercial, um, it's actually got a section of false floor in the back there, and underneath that false floor, we've managed to fit a subwoofer. It's a JL Audio 18 sub. I can't show you, unfortunately, although maybe I can sort of kind of show you where it would be. It's just behind here, but it's in the center. And what you can't see is this, there's these recess panels. The center recess panel, we've actually opened it up and created a grill, trimmed it in acoustic cloth, so no debris can get in there, but it helps allow the base to pass through. We've then done a significant amount of soundproofing to the back of that panel and also the floor and the, the, the upper section above it. So um, nicely deadened there. Now the DSP, so we talked about a digital sound processor. Let's just get this to, okay. So in one of these defenders, the factory head unit has an active front end. So that means that it's got a separate output for the woofer, separate output from the tweeter. So if you want to amplify that signal, you've got to take those two signals and sum them together to give you a full range signal. Then we then set the crossover points where we'd want them to be. So you can use that. You, you can do that without a DSP. You can use something called a summing module, which we do in a slightly more basic system. It still works very well, but really and truthfully, the icing on the cake is to get a DSP in the car. So we're taking those um, high level signals from the head unit we're um, attenuating the signal, we're chopping it up, so digitizing the signal, and then they go, they're blended together within the processor itself. So this one's offline at the moment, it's not connected. But this is actually the profile for this car. So first of all, we've taken those signals, put them into the processor, and as part of the setup process, we've de-equalized the signal. So that means the car's got a kind of, you know, funky curve, and it probably pick the base up, pick the top end up a little bit to give it some equalization, try and make it sound better and compensate for the fairly crap speakers and lack of subwoofer in the bass audio system. So we want to flatten that curve out. So that's all done electronically. Um, it's done in, in the back end of the DSP processor. Um, then once we've got that flattest signal into the processor, we can then configure our, set our speaker configuration. So in this case, it's a mid and tweeter in the front, left and right hand side with passive crossovers. So these are Audison components are running with a passive crossover. There's nothing wrong with a passive system. Um, Audison spent an awful lot of time and money developing that crossover to be perfectly matched those components. So unless you've got them in really awkward positions, not necessarily be, to be active. Um, it's a passive setup that also suits the budget which we're aiming at. Um, that's configured, the crossover points are set, so we're kind of going 70 hertz and upwards on a 24 dB per octave crossover for the high pass on the fronts, and then the same for the low pass to the subwoofer, which is a Joel Audio 8 inch hidden underneath the floor in the back. Then crucially, we can time align it. That makes a really, really big difference. So you can see that we're gonna set the distance between the speaker itself and the driver's nose, for example. And that's how we time align the system. So when you sit in the car, rather than having a right-hand speaker, which is really dominant, which you'll always have in any stereo setup, by delaying the sound from this speaker so it hits you at the same time as that speaker, it has the effects of moving you into the center of the car. So it feels and sounds as if both speakers are playing at the same volume and it creates a really lovely strong center image rather than being over here. Makes a really big difference. We've got several demo cars here, which you can come and listen to and we can actually, we've set them up and programmed them so we can turn the DSP on and off so we can give you an exact idea of what you're gain from a plus system. So that's a plus system, a system with a DSP. 
Um, then we need to tune the system. So in other words, it's for want of a better word, we've got a, a 31 band EQ down the bottom there. So by listening to the system and playing various tracks for it, which we know very well, our reference tracks, we can hear the tonal balance in the system. You know, we can hear that in the, just the lower end of the treble there, so around about 1.6K. Um, it was, it, it's a little bit hard, so it needed to come down slightly. It's also lacking a little tiny bit at the top end, so the top end's come up very slightly. We're also lacking a tiny bit of mid bass, so we just pulled it up around about 100 hertz, which you wouldn't normally to do, but we did in this. Um, so given quite a bit of time listening and setting up the system, uh, we, we've got it sounding really, really good, as you'd expect. Um, system's completed in two days. It's two days' work for two people to do one of these. It does take an awful long time, especially doing the door work and all the work underneath the floor, etc. I will show you in the back. There's nothing really to see, but... Um, hey. Yeah, see, because it's commercial, the floor section goes right the way forward and it's hollow underneath here. These are some of the products we've used, the Audison Voce components. We use lots and lots of these, we love them. Um, the H8 DSP, and of course, we've added a start stop to module to that. And the JL Audio XD500 3, that's a free channel amplifier that runs the front components in stereo and the 8 inch woofer in mono. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, the DRC controller. So the processor comes with something called a DRC controller that just lives in there, still got its protective cover on the front. That will enable us to adjust the level of the subwoofer and also to change the listening position. So we have preset A and B on here. So A is driver focus, which is where it'll be most of the time. But we've also set up a second curve, same equalization, but time in line for the center. So that driver and passenger get an equal kind of effect from the DSP. So um, we always do that. So you've got one driver focus and one neutral. There you go. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully a little bit of extra explanation in there will go some way to um, understanding how a DSP works. It's a great bit of kit. Most systems now tend to have a DSP installed, um, primarily because we can't replace the hedge unit in lots of new cars, and we don't need to. The connectivity is really good. So by adding a DSP, you know we can sort out any nasty equalization. We can time align the system, and we can tune it. There you go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, maybe you want to follow us. We post lots of stuff like this, lots of videos about lots of car audio and all sorts of other funky stuff. Thanks very much for watching.